listening to the Daily Gold Podcast, covering precious metals, the junior mining sector, and global capital markets for intelligent investors. Now, here is your host, Jordan Roy Byrne. Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Daily Gold Podcast. Well, today we have a brand new first-time guest. His name is Francis Hunt, themarketsniper.com. And, you know, I've been watching some of his YouTube videos for a little while. He's a technical guy. He really knows what he's talking about. I like his personality as well. And I thought, you know, he'd be a good fit for the show and our audience. So that's why I'm bringing him on. Really excited to talk to him today about what's going on in all these markets. Francis, it's great to have you on. How are you doing? Doing absolutely great, uh, Jordan. A uh, very interesting day for gold, of course. Uh, and just glad to be on your show. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it, it's a real pleasure to have you. And, uh, you know, we were talking beforehand, and you said you wanted to start with gold. I know we'll, we'll get into some charts maybe in a couple minutes. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. first things first, um, the gold market. I guess give me your big picture view or whatever, at least right now, is on the tip of your mind with respect to gold and its price action. Yes, I, I tend to start on the macro time frames, especially if we're talking conceptually before charting, uh, and say the the major economic uh, landscape we find ourselves in is a debt bubble, a massive, massive, massive over issuance of fiat currency that has been borrowed into existence. So, in actual fact, uh, the reason that we are talking about gold is a very good reason that we're starting there because it's something that you can't print. It's something that can only be pulled up. I think it's somewhere between 1% and 2% new production a year. Um, it costs an immense amount. It takes a lot of energy digging holes in the ground, refining and bringing the stuff up. It has very unique properties that can be extremely effective um, in a variety of uh, industrial use, only its value is too high now. So that's why we have copper and silver uh, and that, tending to have more of an industrial flavor and, and the platinum group as well. Um, as a result, uh, you know, gold is gold is the insurance, and I refer to it as the golden arch from the rickety old iron horse train uh, that will take you over the walkway that's going to take you over to the monorail. Any other assets are likely, like your luggage left on the rickety old train, is likely to be stripped off you, and you barely to come over with your shirt. So there's a transition going on from um, old world physical to digitized everything. And this is very beneficial for your slave masters, but not entirely that beneficial for you. You'll be sold it on convenience and this and that, and there will be user conveniences in the same way apps and mobile phones are kind of convenient, but are also prison tags at the same time that are listening to you all the time. Um, so for the surveillance finance industry, that uh, is the expanding status realm and um, the Magnificent Seven on equities, you may be interested in passing past equities later as well, I understand. Those are the ones that are going up and they are all part of the axis of surveillance finance that are weaponized against you. They are inherently military industrial complex. So whether you're talking about e and his contract to put up satellites for uh, the defense, uh, the U.S. defense industry, uh, you know, it's going to be for tracking and tracing uh, role as well. Uh, if you're looking at uh, the pharmaceutical industrial complex, people will argue that there's been insufficient recent history that it's certainly been weaponized against us uh, and stripping away our freedom. So that's quite dark stuff. But the, that, those, those are where we're going. We're going into a totalitarian uh tiptoe almost tiptoeing towards it and i'm i'm all for de-digitizing um finding your own freedom seeking liberty uh and that which you hold in your hand that is not on an electronic asset basis is uh something you still own um however they have weapons for that and tokenization which will actually be these proxy derivatives of anything you own like a gold bar are coming but anyway, back to your main question, gold uh, Gold had a very interesting day today. We actually had a couple of trades finished today and we got out uh, on a shorter, medium time frame. But on the macro, as I was referring, we see, despite all efforts by the central banking cartel, gold going to the doorstep of 3000 as, as a medium macro view. And we actually see well beyond that once that's happened. And we just traded 
today, in fact, one of the smaller steps. I'll just give you an example of the kind of thing we do and why today was a very, very key day for gold, in fact. So if you'll allow me, I'll go to the share screen. Um, yes. We shared this actually on our Twitter as well. Um, it's part of uh, under the market sniper, if anyone's interested at the market sniper. This was a, a structure that some of you may recognize. It's a, four, it's a kind of seven, eight hourly view. And we recognize that there's something big coming for gold. This is what we call a squeeze on that chart there. And our specific strategy is volatility compression. It's called the hunt volatility funnel. It funnels. It looks like, you know, you're used to making your protein shakes for working out. It's something that squeezes into, uh, you know, powder, big catchment into small uh, dispensary. Uh, and you tend to get highly impulsive moves out of that. And I'm just giving you an example of one. And another example of something that's getting volatility compression is a, pa a pattern that's known as a falling wedge. Uh, and we look for three impulses in that. So we were very alert, and I'll be showing you on a smaller time frame that same chart. But then the key thing if you trade gold is these guys don't want to let it get disorderly strong. You've got to understand that. So you have to be far more nimble, and you, sh you can't sit on the super macro time frame and just say, especially if you're using light leverage conservatively, as we tend to do, because we have you know, clear stops. You have to have a point where you get in, which was over here, a place where you accept you're wrong, which was over there, the red zone, and a place where you take some off. This represented, by the way, and I'll just highlight the number, 10.89, almost 11 is to one risk reward trade. And you can see if you're doing it right, you're not on the market very long. The overall time gestation was that and job done. And then we are out. I'll show you for that little uh, structure as well, because this is a seven, seven, eight hour chart. Uh, the smaller image was, uh, let's go the other way. The smaller image was on a, a 30 to 45 minute chart. And this is another example of compression that we trade. This is a falling wedge. And we always look for a three impulse structure when you're in a falling wedge. That's kind of the third. And you didn't visit all the way down to the bottom. In fact, you made on a smaller time frame, and I'll use a different color, uh, another squeeze. Again, another small HVF on a smaller time frame. So we even got people who missed the original trade in on this trade. And this was a six is to one. So you had very tight risk management. Risk management was under these uh, last lows. You were in here. It actually dipped through that. It filled you. And it went very, very strongly and actually overperformed. So by the way, to everyone Today, you and I are talking a new high traded for gold today, 2,224, I think it is. You're seeing it running the 2,000, all the twos there uh, on the smaller time frame chart. So there was a nice little pullback period. There was a bit of dollar strength during this period, the falling wedge. Uh, and hence, you got the little bit of the pullback. So I call gold the god market of the anti-fiats. If it moves the other anti-fiats can um, move in sympathy. And it's notable that Bitcoin got a bit of a turn as well. So Bitcoin looks up to gold generally because gold is the first to sniff out the dollar weakness and the people uh, going into... Many people argue with this, and I'm not really interested. Uh, it's just observationally always seems to be true. Uh, the central banks aren't buying Bitcoin. They will buy gold. And they are the insiders and they get to see what the other guys are doing and they build their view and they will go for the liquidity. So they're not buying silver. It takes too much space to store. And I love silver, by the way. I'm just telling you how it is. And, uh, and so some people get offended. Uh, but gold moves first. And we could see the squeezing while Bitcoin was still skidding. This was this blue little tight squeeze was coming. And we said that's going to be to the upside on balance of probabilities. We never know something. But we uh, we certainly do it. The other thing I always tend to do is a lot of people on Twitter are a little bit after timer. So we posted this before and we showed everyone after both the seven hour structure as it was breaking. Uh, and you can find it on the Twitter feed and also the smaller structure before and after under the market sniper. And we actually trade. I mean, in this instance, I just gave an example. No amounts. I'm not interested in bragging, but we just show you there's the entries. There was the exits when it was coming down. We were needed to make sure it wouldn't go too far. And then when we could see it was squeezing again to go back up, we were back in long and then we were out. Uh, and that's a great trade. It's a 10.89 and a re-get in for another six risk reward. Most people trading with a little bit of leverage are not getting sixes and tens. 
I worked in an, uh, you know, an academy where people were working as a, in a consulting basis and everybody thinks they're trading two is to one. And then you say, show me your, show me your executed trades, <laughs> your winners and your losers. Yeah. And the losers are, are let to run and they run well past their planned risk. They said, I was meant to close that there, but I, you know, I thought it might turn. And then with this, you know, you get a story, the narratives start coming. And then, and then when you look at the winners and they snatched the profit because they got scared because it was pulling down. So I said, hang on a minute. You know, your actual losses, you're allowing to run a whole bunch further. And the minute you're making any money, you're so glad you've got a green number. You're snatching it in fear. So the truth of the matter is people do not submit to a process. They're responding emotionally in almost every case. So these those exits weren't even done by me. They were pre in the system. I wasn't there. I've, I'm often asleep when my best trades exit. So this is how you set up listen if we're right this is what it'll do at the same time we're net investors so you can go and turn these profits that you make and go back and stack some silver and gold uh, again especially if fundamentally which is a different science um you feel the 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 debt uh, inevitability and the inflation inevitability and the financial collapse inevitability for which digital assets will not serve you near as well uh, as owning it and holding it in your hand. So yeah, I just thought I'd give you that as a little looseness to uh, our take, our methodology, because it's the first time I'm here, uh, and our general positioning uh, in terms of this. So we're big believers in gold, and we fear um, a very painful reset. The people that, but that sounds super black pilled, and that I'm like kind of negative. I'm actually looking forward to it because it's going to be the end of this perverted society. The problem is what replaces it. And unfortunately, the same people that created the inversion, perversions, uh, financial hyper indebtedness are going to be around the clean slate new system. So you, you have to have a, a jaundiced eye, I'm afraid. Otherwise, you're too naive and you're going to get skinned all the time. Uh, so we don't suffer fools. Um, and we uh, we know our own minds and uh, we're net investors in the precious metals and holders, but don't have an illusion that they're going to let it go up single handedly for a long time. In actual fact, I warn many precious metals guys, and this is quite a long monologue, so I'll zip it after this, but you may not get to see it ever trade to its final high point. You could have counterparty risk. Brokers will go down. You'll lose your, you know, your trading cash. All sorts of things will happen. There'll be an aftermath, and then a new value for gold in lieu of debt may be announced. Uh, it'll just, and and that, by the way, that happens already before, you know, with uh, the twenty dollars moving to thirty five right there in your own country. Uh, only the difference will be it's more likely, you know, you might be trading it at two or three, and then they might say. We really need to revalue this thing a whole bunch more. And as we hold a lot of it, uh, we think it's 30,000 now uh, or whatever the case may be, because the extremity of the damage and the globalized nature of the debt is a much greater, much greater parabola than anything you faced during um, the 1930s when uh, that last incident I referred to uh, occurred. Anyway, yeah, that's that's kind of my uh, response. No, yeah, yeah. Two follow ups on that. The first one. Um, is that how you see that? Because I'm calling it a new secular bull market in gold, but is that how you see this move eventually ending over the years ahead? That it has to go back into the monetary system, they revalue it. So, do you think that because it's important to know like where you're going? I mean, and obviously, it's you know, we, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but you study history and, and you can, you know, you the the debt situation, it's out of control. I mean, a new system is coming at some point, as you said. It, it, is that where you think that how this ends eventually? So I avoid pinning my colors to any one particular outcome, because as you correctly point out, we're talking about the future and nobody does know. What you do is you study your history and you look at all the other ways they've cheated. And you recognize that most people are in what I call a hyper normalized state. They think they'll trade gold up to 10 or 25 grand. Um, you know, they'll sit there and trading it and they'll watch it and there'll be a market open for it. You can, might get some of that and it could happen. I, I'm not saying it won't happen. Let's say it's final highs, even 100,000 or 50,000. I mean, the, the, the value it would have to have to counter the amount of debt that's been created, or they're going to cancel the entire system and they'll make, make it illegal to hold gold. I mean, I upset a lot of people on one channel where I said, you know, you might have to, you might, might have to go dark with your gold holdings. Um, because they literally get the, the totalitarianism is so strong that they'll say, you know, you must pledge it. Don't forget, they people voluntarily did it because they were 
brainwashed into believing governments did the right thing. Um, now that there's that skepticism, they may just do it by force of uh, threat. Uh, and, you know, many people will comply out of fear of some threatening 100 year prison sentence and a million buck fine or whatever the case may be, which would be about the inflationary equivalent of what they threatened last time. Um, but the fact of the matter is, uh, I don't think anybody should be in the compliance business when it comes to the way governments are conducting themselves at current. In short, I think we are all we are all rebels. Um, we are all um, renegades. Uh, we are the militia, and we should be working actively against our current government's direction. They do not follow principles of sound money. They do not follow um, a peace first approach. They're warmongers, and they are certainly pursuing an enrichment policy of a inner cartel that is tied through the various industrial complexes of the military, the farmer. Um, and the surveillance finance tech access. And as a result, they're all heavily invested in that. They get heads up. Uh, you and I were just talking about the euro Swiss franc, where we expected the, the euro actually to gain against the Swiss franc, which is not atypical. And we had a setup for it, uh, our known setup, and we were discussing it in our community. And then shock and horror, this, uh, unexpectedly, the Swiss actually cut an interest rate. So these guys are insider trading. Uh, by the way, if you, in case you think that's a fluky guess, uh, Hildebrand, the previous uh, Swiss National Bank, his wife had a Forex trading account and had racked up huge uh, yeah. amounts, uh, gains on the euro Swiss franc collapse in the opposite direction when the euro was losing value. So they are cheating, cheating and cheating. And they keep telling you how honest they are and how honest you should be. And my game is don't be the only fool patsy playing by the rules in a game surrounded by mafia uh, extracting uh, bankers and cartels that are actually planning the impoverishment of the masses and the, uh, the collation of all assets under one. And if you want to see that, forget what the Fed says to you. Oh, the Gini curve. Yes, we know the, the, the income distribution. Look at the outcomes they are getting rather than the words that they say. And the Gini curve has never been more distorted uh, in the US. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, you take your top 1% of wealth and you've got more than 50% of all the wealth in America. Um, so I would say don't do as they say, do as they do uh, for yourself and for your family. In other words, this whole notion of loyalty to country, unfortunately, if it's a captured country by a mafia state uh, of extractors, you should do what's right for you and your citizenry, and you should preach it to your fellow men and get local and get community active. Uh, and the faster we get gold bid up and dra drained away, uh, the faster we bring this uh, parade that they put on for us to an end. Yeah, that's uh, that's perfect because I it gives me a transition. Because earlier you mentioned gold. I think you had a 3,000, like a medium-term target. Hey, can you pull up like a big picture chart of gold and just tell us what you're seeing, uh, how you come up with 3000, maybe the time frame you see that happening? Yeah. So when it comes to charting, if you want a big uh, if you want big numbers, you've got to look at big time frame uh, charts. Uh, and that's exactly what we uh, tend to do. Uh, so if I uh, just go back to sharing again. And I'll go straight to the share screen. And this this was today's price action on a much shorter time frame. And you can see we exited it at 210, which is catching the tops all the way here. And you can see you had quite a substantial pullback. We got the exit in there. We literally sold wicks. And you can see there's been quite a substantial correction there. So this is why I say you don't get to hold on to everything every time there's a major move. Of course, this was the dovish J Powell uh, that caused, gave us this setup and that move. Um, now, we, now your question was about the bigger time frames, uh, and I'm going to take you there right away. So if we just go, uh, th there's a number of ways you want big charts for big targets. And in actual fact, I'm going to I'm going to answer your 3,000, 2,900 question, and I'm going to give you a bit more to boot. Uh, here's an example. So this is our current gold chart. By the way, whilst we made new highs on the on the dollar here, we'd uh, it's only recently that we got new highs. Uh, through the 2066. So gold is now in a new highs cycle. The 3000 is our 2897. You can see there's a target here and it's 2897. Uh, and that is coming. So just so that you can see that, that is coming from this 
structure here. That's a broadening structure. We would call it a megaphone. We call it a megaphone on a bull pole. Uh, and we expect a projection of similar scale. And that gives you to the gateway of 3K. The round numbers are very psychological. Um, you can see how we bought at the 2K. This blue dotted line was your 2K. And you could see we was we bought at it. We only did 1927. And then we had a huge pullback. And here we touched it and just ran it three times. And then the fourth time we break. So we have a saying once, twice, three times a lady. Uh, so you, you test it three times. And then the fourth time is actually the win. Um, if you want the bigger kind of viewpoints uh, on metals, and this will get this will give a lot of joy, hopefully, to uh, the, the patient stackers. And it is an act of patience, is these projections that are coming out uh, out of these larger structures. Uh, so again, if I just uh, move that image down there, you're seeing, for example, a six and a half and a seven eight. So that is that is taking you to mid mid sixes as a target, and that is taking you to just under eight. Where did that come from? That's a projection of this bull market. Now I want to say to you that the 2001 to the 2011 that was a basically 10 year bull market, and that included the you know, the subprime event uh, dip and sell off. Um, and that was shrugged off. It looks very small when you see it like this. Uh, that was shrugged off pretty easily. So again, you would probably draw a flag on this one. And say so you broke out of it there. That's We tend to split off flags like that. And you had a, a slow start. Then you went. So that, that's pointing to about 7835. And it's actually, I would say, behind schedule. But you tend to finish moves with parabolas and blow-offs. So what's behind schedule today can suddenly go and catch up real quick um, subsequently. But that points to gateway of 8K. So you, you, you're going to stall it uh, just before the 3K, which is what we did at the 1000 mark, by the way. So I'll also just remind people a little bit of history. Uh, here you had the 1000. Again, lots of times bumping into it. You just ran it, 1035. Then you were just trading 900s here and then 900s again, 900s. And then you broke to the upside and you went straight from one almost to two. And my argument is we're going to go pretty promptly almost to three. And then we're going to balk a little bit at three, mess around. We might just run it and pull back or we might just fall short of it like the 1927. Then again, there'll be a bit of pause and then we'll go again. But I think the pauses are getting shorter and the moves getting more violent. And this is typical of how you're getting ever more deeper into a parabola. You have bigger runs and shorter pauses, and that's what gives you the melt up. Uh, and if you look at the history of gold, uh, we are we are we are going more and more towards um, a very, very uh, disorderly ascent, which will probably point to a lot of disorderly descents in the debt markets and the FX markets. Uh, and I remind everybody that debt is money borrowed into existence. So the FX markets and the debt markets are, are pretty much tied together. They're both massive, um, but money is borrowed into existence. At the moment, the reason the yen has been the perpetual loser, that is something we call, is because they were on yield curve control while everyone else was allowing rates to go up. So just the variance in interest rates saw the yen collapse and has actually given the Nikkei a massive tailwind. Uh, on some high quality uh, companies that were very good at competing with a strong currency, now getting this additional benefit of now they can compete with European and American markets uh, with a lot weaker currency. So the likes of Toyota, Fujitsu, uh, and a number of other equities are going to be stealing market share. By the way, this is one of our calls, Fujitsu. Again, same thing. We, tr we do one thing really well. That's trading constrictions. And we called this one to go up and we're waiting for the 276. So it's pretty much all the way there. There, and We've been a net long the Nikkei. Uh, we've got huge charts for it. Uh, the Nikkei is going to be the star of the next five years. People think it's already done a lot. It's gone too far. It, it's not even begun, uh, especially if the yen gets weaker, which is possible. Because whilst they might talk about raising rates, I don't think it's ever affordable for them to return to rate policy uh, like that, which are in the Western nations and the US. They just have too much debt. They can't pay it. It would be instant failure. 
Yep, Francis, I, I want to get into silver, but the first thing I wrote this down because I think it's so important what you said with respect to gold. And this is how, you know, I know that you are an outstanding technical ana analyst because what you mentioned that, you know, the pauses are getting shorter and that the moves can get more violent for gold. And I, I just think that's so how you you're able to extract that from the chart. I mean, that's elite. That's elite level technical analysis, in my opinion. Um, but I. I, I I mean, I just wanted to, to sh shout you out on that because I think that's so important. And especially because gold has just, it's broken out from the big pattern and we're still very, very early days. So, I mean, I don't know if, I, I don't really have a question. I just wanted to you know, shake your hand for a great insight, but can you, is there anything you can add on top of that? Because to, again, to me, that's just, it's so important to understand that. Yeah, it's kind of what we call a quickening. In fact, in HVF method, we often get monthly volatility constrictions in fact uh we had one in the yen um and that was one of the reasons we were the first to the japan trade now many people's eyes glaze over when you start talking about japan to americans and europeans it seems like a far off place a different people different culture the other side that, that was the third biggest and at one point the second biggest economy you know uh of incredibly good manufacturers uh very very disciplined workforce um, and, you know, they continued to compete in the face of a ever strengthening currency. The yen was one six hundred and eighty yen to a pound, you know, post-war. And, you know, it went to the low 100s before this period of weakening. However, the other interesting about, thing about the yen is that they, they got a little call from the Fed. The Fed post-World War II essentially can dominate uh, the Bank of Japan. The, the Japanese essentially are bullied by America, um, I'm afraid to say. And you just have to listen to our interview that we did with Professor Werner about the, the, the settlement of the peace. It's, it's quite shocking, really, because the truth of the matter is the little bit of political statement. We didn't need to do the two atomic bombs at all. Yeah. They'd already conditionally, un unconditionally surrendered. Um, but uh, the likes of Oppenheimer, who they're now immortalizing in a Netflix movie, wanted to test his uh, toy that he developed with the help of Einstein. And Oppenheimer and Einstein seized the opportunity to say, don't sign anything. Um, we can practice uh, on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Uh, and that's exactly what they did. And they basically did worse than Dresden, the crimes of Dresden, which was the, the phosphorus, white phosphorus firebombing of German civilians, non-military targets. We basically took out women and children um, and disabled old men that weren't in the ranks of the fighting soldiers on civilian towns. But that little political statement aside, and I use that as uh, one of the many motives, as I say, don't fund the military industrial complex, they're inherently evil, um, was to, to lay down a marker of fear for us all, including supposedly the Stalin, who was an, uh, at that point an ally, for the future Cold War that they'd planned as their next stage of extraction. So, I mean, these people were always playing one step ahead and essentially they ritually sacrificed a few hundred thousand uh, Japanese to make a point of fear. And, you know, I sat in South African schools in the tip of Africa, climbing under, uh, uh, you know, school benches on, you know, to drill in case of a nuke. Uh, so, you know, that, that's just fear. It's just fear as a product. And that's, that was designed to do that. That point aside, they got a call and they got told, you know what? You seem to have a problem. You're not buying enough of our stuff. Um, you keep exporting loads of stuff that we're buying and you're building up a trade surplus. And also you're not spending anything with us to any meaningful scale. You have a savings problem. You know, you know that horrible thing when you've got too much cash and you have a savings problem. Um, here's what you're going to do. You know, you're going to accept that we're pricing oil in dollars. So it wasn't just the Saudis with the petrodollar. You're going to you're going to buy uh, oil because, of course, they were totally reliant on the energy in dollars and anything you have left over. You're going to buy our debt to help sustain it. So Japan was made to be an investor in tea hills uh, with this beneficial economy that they had. They had to get stymied with being forced into this toxic asset class that was going to be forever pr proliferated, for which, as I say, if you want a bubble and everyone talks about property bubble and Bitcoin bubble and all of this, they're all bubble spotted. There's only one bubble, and that is currency borrowed into existence, aka debt. That is the bubble. That is why you have inflation. 
That is why things are costing more because there's more of those dollars and as a result, they buy you less. The pie didn't get bigger. We just cut way more pizza slices. So you you know you have to eat more slices to get the same amount of hunger because they've got a whole bunch smaller. That's your dollars buying power. Those shrinking dollar uh, those pizza slices. So that is the fundamental people need to understand. Central banks policy is inflation. They absolutely expect to compound interest against you. So they put you on the wrong side of a compound interest occasion where they're, they're, they're largely run by mercantilist ursary extractors from way back to Marco Polo and before. Uh, and they put you on the wrong side of a compound interest equation. That's why I have absolutely no debt. Now, there are instances where raising debt could be good. I once had a Japanese yen uh, mortgage, which I paid a pittance in interest on quarterly, which was less than what I would have paid in dollars. And uh, the currency was devaluing at the time. So it was a win-win. But generally, uh, I, I prefer not to have debt. I prefer not to have anyone extract ursary against me. And the only time I'd consider borrowing is um, if I had a fixed rate. And the biggest warning I give everybody now is, unlike everybody's expectations, where there's going to be this long, lengthy series of cuts, and Powell is talking about a cut now in June, and everyone's expecting three, is... Hold on a minute. Do you understand the debt markets? Debt markets are like a seesaw. My elbow is the valuation and my hand is the rates. If the rates go down, the valuation of debt must go up. Rates up, valuation down. How do you devalue and taper a debt Ponzi? You certainly don't drop rates because now you're saying the debt's worth so much. Hey, look at this valuation. Well, guess what? Everybody's been spooked. You had a pension crisis in Britain. They couldn't sell their debt. There wasn't enough bid. You've had the Japanese be the only bid, the BOJ, in uh, their their bond market. Um, so you've got uh, a couple of instances, and then you've had bank failures recently. And let me just remind everybody, banks are the intermediaries of money that is borrowed into existence. So the debt system, central bank, create debt, borrows and the intermediators that actually create the debt is actually the banks. So you've had major bank failures. We started two years now with second and third largest bank failures uh, in existence outside of Lehman's uh, two years in a row now. And of course, the Fed has circled the wagons. And what do they say? Well, we can't guarantee um, the small banks will always be bailed out. What they're actually saying is Americans get into the big, too big to fail banks drop the small guys, herd all the rats and mice, let's make vulnerable all the smaller banks, we are consolidating. So he actually said, and by the way, his shareholders are all those same big banks. Isn't it convenient? And you tell me there's no agency problem. You tell me there's no corruption. Your local credit union could be denied support, never done any derivatives, never done any dirty deals with Mexican cartels uh, to launder money. Your local credit union won't be allowed to run. Your local bank will get closed because of liquidity being drained away in the larger system by these vampires banks of Bank of America, um, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, et cetera, et cetera, which, of course, was chaired by Rockefeller when Trump was carried through the savings and loans crisis. For those of you who want to vote for Donald Trump uh, and wondering who he works for. So there's a couple of things for people to consider. So the banking cartel is part of the weaponry. It's the financial weaponry against you. And the pharmaceutical is the health weaponry against you. And the military industrial complex is the, the shooting of you. And the tech are the surveillance of you, the data scrapers, profilers, and everything. And they are building profiles on us all. So the, the truth of the matter is we all need to decamp, de-digitize, uh, and get local and build, grow your own food, get really, really local, and have your own money. And I'm suggesting gold as a millennial of uh period of acceptance, way beyond the 3,000, 4,000 years that it's been made, uh, should be the basis of that. And you can start again. And I will take gold as payment for any of my services from anyone. And I encourage more people to stand up and say, I'll take the gold. Thank you. I'll take the gold. And let's start uh, having some real opposition to the digitized, tokenized Trojan horses that are going to be weaponized against you. Blockchain is an open source internet banking account. Uh, and guess what? Who will have the privacy and the special algos to hide? Um, 
the big corporations will. You won't be able to see what they're paying out to yeah. the owners. But when it comes to seeing whether you paid your penny of tax on the, the ice cream you just bought uh, from income and, you know, uh, paying back a mate for a coffee and getting a tax bill uh, for the income of that returned $10, uh, you're going to be harassed real-time taxation. It is an absolute, it's an absolute dystopia. Uh, and we need to opt out. And that's a real hardcore message. Yeah. Uh, Francis, I want to, because we were talking about gold, I want to move into silver because, sure. you know, silver continues to fail at $26. I mean, pretty big you know, gold do all time high today, as you said. There's been a little bit of pullback. You look at silver, even more of a pullback there. I mean, this thing just cannot break 26. I mean, give us some color on what it will take for silver to finally break 26 and, and really take the leadership from gold. So it won't take the leadership until we're in the parabolic phase. So when I referred to God market, gold being the God market, it's the God market of the precious metals industry. And it's also the God market um, of all anti fiat which is why, as I say, it leads even uh, Bitcoin, because most of the people will run into uh, the gold axis. So silver is in a larger, more drawn out version of what gold is in. But gold leads first, and it's how it always is. And it's a positive sign. Eventually, silver will lead, and then it will play chronic catch up. So the technical setup I'm showing is you are still captive under this red line that I've now doubled up with a blue line in this very large flag. So silver is still contained here. It's got a soft floor around 22. All those red circles you see, that's kind of a soft floor. We've had a couple of dips below that once or twice, but generally we come back quite quickly. So silver, I mean, solar is going ballistic. Uh, I mean, I come from South Africa where the main, e can, uh, the main uh, electricity provider can't even keep the lights on. Mm. Everybody with any means is solared out uh, and got the roof panels on. Uh, and you're going to see much, much more of that, especially as they're pushing the, the various uh, EV agendas that they are pushing. Uh, at the moment, it's, it's something that is appreciated. But when it breaks, you're looking at a 44.9 going. So our, our break for once it breaks, don't forget. So I said the, the, the gaps and the pauses on gold are getting shorter and the moves bigger. That's part of the parabola, the later stage. What eventually happens is you get to silver. And silver is almost schizophrenic to uh, gold. It's benign, it's benign, it's sleepy, and then it's insane. So it's lagging, lagging, lagging. And one of the best analogies I think that most people tend to understand is if if I'm in my Range Rover with my tow bar and instead of a normal tow bar, I have this fat bungee cord and I have a trailer behind attached to it uh, and I'm climbing this hill. What actually happens is the four by four is climbing the hill and the rope, which is rubberized bungee cord, is just taking up the slack and the trailer is still sitting on the low point because it's heavy. It's got a couple of nice big... Uh, uh, thousand ounce bars in it of silver and it ain't moving but what tends to happen is once the bungee cord has properly taken up all the stretch it can do and we're still in this four by four putting distance on the trailer uh, with my rather eccentric tow rope um, once that eventually gets taken up is that that uh, cord starts to contract violently and then the trailer spurts up at first start slowly it starts gaining momentum. And then as the, the, the four by four is still going up this ever bigger hill, it starts to contract and you get the snapback. And then it starts catching up uh, to the four by four. And that actually means it's, oh, it's it starts to over accelerate relative to the original engine. So the God market where there's the power is gold in the four by four. Silver is doing the taking up the load in the bungee cord. But when it goes, it will go violently. Uh, by the way, the 45 to the 50 gateway dollar mark is one we've come to two other times before, in the 80s and in 2011. So if we go out, I'm not sure if I've got enough data on this one that it'll show it. Let me just blow that out. We might even need uh, a few months in it. Let's just get six months or three months. 
you'll be able to see from this chart. And we've done some very interesting projections here as well. So you can see that roughly the $50, the $45 to $50 zone, and I'll put a, I'll put a square around it. That's a resistance point. It was a resistance point in the 80s. That was when $50 bought you a lot more than it does today. It was again in the truncated bull market. I don't think we got the full bull uh, here. And then uh, we are winding up to go back into this zone. And I've uh, what will then happen is I fear, remember it's once, twice, three times a lady, and then the fourth time you're through. So I actually think we will still have a pullback when we get there. We will have a pullback. But as I mentioned to you, again, the pullbacks are getting smaller and the subsequent moves bigger. See that cup versus this cup? And eventually this cup will be even smaller and the move will be even bigger. And if you want a big number to be thrown out at you, this would get a lot of the silver guys excited. But we're forecasting approximately, and we can't say until the pattern's finished, but we've already got a target beyond $302. Now, what the dollar will be then, and this isn't next week, next month, or, e or even next year, but what the dollar will be then may be a, a moot point to discuss. But for what it currently describes. And that comes geometrically again. This target is generated from this pullback from the 80s down to the absolute lows down to here. So it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty big stuff in time. But we first need to break that red uh, line that I'll take you back down to on the daily. Uh, but I just wanted to give you the big time view. Uh, we, we keep getting rebutted at it. In fact, I might need the weekly for that one. You can see we keep getting rebutted. We call this a capping descending grind line. And there's a rejection every time. And we we keep suspecting it. It'll be the first time it doesn't get rejected will be the beginning of a very, very strong run. Do, and this do, is do evidence you, at the gold yeah, silver ratio. Yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Francis, but I mean, do you think when if gold can close above 2200, is that what's needed to for silver to break that structure or does gold need to get to 23 or 2400 do you have any thoughts on that gold needs a more sustained period of impulsive upside i'm not putting a number to that uh we can bring the gold chart back up and have a look at that for you and try sketch a couple of scenarios but that's all they would be my best guesses as scenarios so inherently we keep getting the, the gold always gets stopped when silver bumps into this red line and you can see a little bit of a shooting star, that little red candle today. That's going to pull it back into range again. Until one of these days, it cries wolf enough times until the wolf comes. And then you go, and then you're going to go disorderly. Because that's the moment the bungee cord is a stretched as far as it will go. And it's now got all that built up potential energy in it. It's yanking the trailer up faster than the 4 by 4 is going. Because you've got the, the, the drive energy of the vehicle and the the potential energy in the cord. And that's that's when things get super interesting. And I kind of expected this to be knocked down because we had a 2,210 target on gold and we know to sell out because it, there's certain rules we have that we know when to expect overperformance and when you should close. And it was one of those we needed to close. And you could see gold then sold off 40 or 50 bucks uh, straight away. So we expected silver to get knocked back down. Uh, through here. In fact, I have a different chart for assessing when silver breaks. I think your question is, Francis, when's it going to move for silver? Because I went straight to silver. Well, first of all, you should always be first in gold in the early part because you've missed out on a lot of upside while silver is just coiling, building up all this potential energy. You rotate into silver as you start moving into the more mature stage. Now, there's no harm in having some silver. Now I have plenty. Um, but you you know, gold was the, the first one to uh, hold. And that's the gold-silver ratio. So if I bring you to the gold-silver chart, that might prove to be, and I'll give you a set Great. of criteria. Yeah, that, that uh, was my next question, the gold-silver ratio. Yes. Uh, and it answers your previous question more clearly as well, which is when does silver run? So silver will run, in my opinion, again, as I will say, on balance of probabilities, no guarantees, but I've been watching this structure set up for an extended period. So we're looking at the gold-silver ratio. 
And by the way, I want to make this very important point every time I come to the gold-silver ratio. That it goes, it's the antithesis, it's the shadow to the debt markets. So debt valuations peaked in March 2020, which was the event I will not name that you all know. And that was when rates were at the near zero in the US. You know, you got 0 0.3, I think. That was hypervaluation in an absolutely proliferated debt market. And I, and I often say, think about what that means. It's like I bring in ship containers of pink Crocs and everybody's got a pair. And then I bring another 10, you know, oil tankers full of pink Crocs. And I say, here, have a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth pair of pink Crocs. How badly are you wanting to wear something that's no longer fashionable uh, and have a third, fourth, and fifth pair? This is proliferation of debt to an umpteenth degree. You've forced pensions to buy it. You've forced foreign nations that you bully as a result of World War II's outcomes into buying it. You've forced everyone, and you still need more buyers. And they're up to their gills, and they all want out. That's your debt market. And you had peak valuation. We called the turn in the debt market. And it was my first ever call saying bonds are over. The 40-year bull is finished. You will have higher rates from here on now in. And the valuations can only generally go down. While there will be rallies, you can only generally go down. And just because I want to make this point, I'm going to take in another chart just and we'll come back to the gold-silver ratio. Because this is a really important point of understanding the financials of this. This is TLT. TLT is a 20 plus years T-bill uh, treasuries ETF. And it's been in a non-stop bull market until up to here. You can see that high. I'm going to change that to a monthly time frame and drag it through. Bull market, bull market, bull market. All the way from here, here, here. Yes, there was some volatility. And that blow off, we said, is the end of bond bull. And we also said it took 40 years to inflate. You take the escalator on the upside. You take the elevator on the downside. In March 2020, we said you're going to take the elevator on. The, on the, that's hard down. That's what we mean by it. That's the analogy. We drew this head and shoulder. People laughed at us. It's, we drew it before it even happened. We had just the one shoulder. We called other people were saying, buy bonds, wear diamonds. We said, no, it's a short. It's going to spill to this level here. And it's going to create a right shoulder on balance of probabilities then trigger. It made that head and shoulders target. It then continued downside. Remember, not just the target applies in a head and shoulder. It is a cyclical turning point of that asset class from a bull into a long running bear. Now, you won't unwind 40 years of inflation in of debt in valuation in two years of bear markets. But boy, this is already a more brutal bear market than any seen before. And let's just remind everybody about the 60-40 portfolios and how everybody was talking about how what garbage they turned into when the equities traded down and the bond market lost even more. Not one year, but two years in a row. That's this that we called in March 2020. We said, that's it. That's the end. This is going to prove to be the top. Too much debt, too big a number, number. Seven trillion, by the way, they gave 24 trillion to the banks. Many people don't realize it was a bigger ba bank bailout than 2008. That's, there was one Zero Hedge article on that, and it got buried. And I mean, not just American banks, UBS, uh, some European banks. So this is why I say you're playing against a cartel, a transnational cartel. It's not country specific. Everyone has nation specific losses. Oh, it's the Chinese that did that, and it's the Russians, and the, the get over it. It's transnational virus that is through the brains of every nation state and pulling the strings. So, the, why am I talking about this when we were talking about the gold silver ratio? Because when you go back to the gold silver ratio, peak bonds was March 2020, peak gold and silver ratio, which proves the antithesis to a debt splurge is actually the precious metals market, gold and silver, was in the exact same month. 
So when we go back now to that original chart, XAU, XAG, the, the gold-silver ratio spiked, which was low valuation. Remember, this is an inverse relation. This is bad for precious metals. So it spiked the same time as the valuations for bonds hit their high. And then it threw it down. And it was stopped at this level, which was a similar level to where it was thrown down before. And this is a macro head and shoulders. People laughed at my bond head and shoulders. This is an even bigger one. Left shoulder, massive blow off head, which is typical of end of trend. We said the events of March 2020 that they pulled on the whole planet is in effect the end of the debt cycle and the beginning of the precious metals cycle. And you're now in a right shoulder here. And we've been captive in a channel on a more lower time frames. I'm on a, a monthly chart here. We have been captive in a channel here on the gold-silver ratio for a very lengthy period. From before 2023, you know, we already caught a one up in 2024. So from 22, the ba back end of 22, to where we are today, we have been trading in a grind up channel. And the reason they this is happening is that this is a far bigger head and shoulder than the TLT, which has already begun its collapse, already made its downside target, and is still going to spill further. You're in the biggest head and shoulder. We are waiting just for the right shoulder to break this red dashed line. And that will see it run down to 65. It's currently up in the, uh, the upper 80s. 88, it's regularly touching 90, and it's grinding higher until it can't anymore. When the relative valuation of silver is too cheap to gold, and we see a break of this level, you will see a disorderly descent to the 65 level. I would expect some bounce and reaction, and then we will go to this target, which is in the 30s to the downside. And in an overshoot, because as I mentioned, head and shoulders targets are not the end of the moves. In this massive cyclical overshoot of financialization of everything, controlling, manipulating interest rates, debt expansion, you will potentially trade single digit in the overshoot to the downside. Don't forget, you shot up to 128. And there's a beautiful geometry to charts. What overshoots to one side will be by equal extreme undershooting at some later point. Because all that leverage that gets put on that blows off to the top gets unwound on the downside. There's a natural geometry to charts. And that, my friends, will be everybody's Christmases in the silver market. And we are waiting. And the reason I'm not getting excited about that silver, and I said it's going to reject on that capping descending grind line. How did I know that before it even happened? How did I know I'm going to sell all my gold out, my leverage, not my investment gold, but let me be clear, my leverage trading of gold and take my profits on the 2,210 because this is not yet ready to go. It's not even on the bottom. It needs to come back down here. Had we been grinding along this line really low and slow, I would have been far more circumspect and prepared to see the possibility that we could break out. As long as we're not breaking through and this right shoulder is not starting its down leg to the 65 neckline, we're not having the silver run. As long as we continue to stay in this range, because to really, really boost silver, and I'm going to take you back to my analogy, you don't just want silver to go at the speed of the four by four. You will actually have it going at a faster pace. It has to have the built up energy in my bungee cord, suddenly wanting to snap, pulling it as well as the power of the uh, four by four. And for that to happen, it has to break here because that means it's going up faster than the car. And for that to happen, the gold-silver ratio has to be going down through this level. And we have to be making new lows, not staying in channel. And as long as we're on the high side of the channel, we're in the upper half. I split it in half. You can see we're on the high side. I'm not expecting silver to break out. So you get worn out with all the cry wolves for silver. There's every time you go into silver, you bought it. Every time it touched that red line on the silver chart, I can bring it back for you. You go rushing in. Let's put it back in there the silver. You would be absolutely worn out. You won't believe a signal in the future. Having what I have, which is a real methodology to understand this, 
is I don't get faked in. I'm not getting faked in chasing silver. I only traded gold. I only traded gold. The first part, I actually traded palladium. It went up quicker. There was a nice setup on that, but that's just a moot point. The second part was only the gold. Didn't touch silver at all. Why? Because it's it's got, it's it keeps coming off the capping descending grind line until it doesn't. And when won't it? When that gold silver ratio is ready to drop, because that's when it's going to have more momentum than gold, not less. And that is a key event. Not ready to do it. And that's why shooting star here on the red line and a bit of a pullback. Francis, thank you so much for that analysis on silver and especially the gold silver ratio as we close can you please tell our listeners where they can go to find you and uh the services you provide and how you can add value for them sure first time with you guys thanks for having me on first of all appreciate it and uh wishing everybody watching us our u.s citizen and friends visits to your common country many times it's a sad fact unfortunately that all our governments and nation states have been captured They've been captured by a transnational parasite, uh, and you need to protect yourself from that. Um, we have a lot of American and British and from all over the world engaged in our uh, community, which is in the market sniper. And our core raison d'etre, the reason for existence, is building wealth and preserving that wealth in a very unique economic time, which is reset season. All the traditional financial advice that you've been given to financial advisors will not serve you well in terms of what's coming. Buy a pension, they'll invest in bonds and have a little bit of equity. All of these things are going to let you down. There's concepts like the great taking. There's many other things people should be watching out on. The game actually is that the states or wherever you live is weaponized against you in terms of your wealth and potentially your health as well. So you've got to be prepared for that. You've got to outsmart. The way you do that is game theory. Don't get depressed, get even, be smart, recognize you were born for these times. You were chosen to handle this because you can. It's an obstacle course and you're going to have to run it. Work together. Men lift the ladies over the, the difficult obstacles, work together as a team, et cetera, et cetera. This is what our community is about, preserving wealth, uh, as well as building wealth through a concept of investing and trading using our bespoke methodology of HVF method. If you'd like to learn more, go to the Market Sniper on YouTube and you will see that we don't believe what anybody says. We watch the footprints in the sand. This is from someone who called the collapse of the oil market to single digits before the events of March 2020. Technically, didn't have any special membership to Bohemian Grove or any of these peculiar societies. Uh, you can do it all. They always show what they're doing with their footsteps in the sand, and that is the chart. And that is the only thing I trust because they're out to enrich themselves at your expense. And I watch it. You'll never be the first, but by moving uh, at the right times, you too can learn the skill that we are implementing in live real markets. And you saw some of the trades right in the beginning. Go have a look at them again. Follow us on Twitter. And I'd love to uh, see you uh, pop over to the YouTube and watch it if you'd like a bit more information book a call at the market sniper.com and whether you do or don't lots of strength and blessings don't get bummed out by anything i've said get healthy get strong get prepared that is your choice in life you don't get to choose your environment you get to choose how you respond to that environment and i am putting up a fight and i'm going down fighting and i'm going down helping as many people as i can it's evangelical in terms of how i uh, view this challenge uh, and i'm not going to stop helping bringing other people around and lifting them up and that's the game until next time, uh, God bless you all. Francis, thank you so much for joining me and my audience. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to speaking with you again over the months ahead. Thank you for having me. Have a great one. Thank you for tuning into the Daily Gold Podcast. For more interviews, editorials, and analysis, log on to thedailygold.com. And for premium coverage of precious metals and the best junior mining companies, visit thedailygold.com forward slash premium.